Hi everybody, this is Peter, Thailand Bound. Thanks for joining me today for another video. So I get asked lots and lots of questions uh, regarding Thailand and two of the questions that come up more often than not are why do I opt to go to Hua Hin instead of Pattaya? And the other question that I get asked very, very often is what changes have I seen in Pattaya, Thailand over the last sort of three decades? And what I like to do is if I get, I get lots and lots of questions about different things but if I get a question come up and it's the same question from lots of people rather than be repetitive and write to each individual person and ex give them the answer they're looking for I like to make a video and that way I can explain everything in that video and I don't have to send separate messages to everybody so as I've, as I've just said to you the two questions that come up quite a lot are what changes I've noticed in the three decades and why do I opt for Hua Hin um, rather than Pattaya? So I think I'll um, discuss Pattaya first, what changes. It might be a little bit of a boring video. If you're one of those guys who you haven't been before and you're just going, you don't care, you're just going to party 24-7, then this video might not be for you. It's more for guys who are kind of uh, a similar age to myself. I'm knocking on 60s door having got one foot in the grave yet but I'm I'm sort of getting closer to um, old age older age um, so we'll, we'll start with Pat here and um, what changes have I noticed over I've, it's actually 25 years it's exactly 25 years since I first went to Pat here um, I arrived in Thailand in 1992 and I first went down to Pat in 1995 so um, the biggest change that I've noticed in the 25 years, and it just it doesn't relate just to Pattaya, it's the whole of Thailand, but this is the, a major change. And it's, it's simple, it's the exchange rate. Um, but we're more talking about, I'm talking more about Pattaya, so I'll try and be a little bit more pacific about Pattaya. Um, the other thing was, it was actually cheap. It's not cheap anymore. So even if the exchange rate hadn't have been good back then, and you only got 4,000 baht for the for a hundred pounds like you do now you'd still get a lot better value because it was a cheap place to visit they didn't have the kind of numbers that they have now it's just saturated with people from around the world obviously back then the internet was in its infancy uh, I've said that wrong but you know what I mean it was the early stages of the um, internet so it wasn't publicized as much now you know you can type in any subject about Thailand Walking Street Nana Plaza girls, prices, and you'll get thousands, not one or two, you'll get thousands of videos on each subject. And because of that, people are able to do a lot of research and they know what to expect, where to go and uh, all the rest of it. So that's kind of spurred a lot of people to come to Thailand and it, it's pretty much saturated now and it is very much different. Um, specifically in my case, what differences have I seen other than the, um, the prices and the exchange rate? I've noticed it's kind of gone a lot more corporate and what I mean by that, there's a lot of money being invested in um, Patia and Walking Street right now. 25 years ago, most of the bars were, and the go-go bars, there weren't that many go-go bars back then, guys. I mean, you had seven or eight off a little soy. There weren't actually any on Walking Street itself. My favourite back then was Happier Go-Go, and I believe that's still there at the end of one of the soys halfway down. I know it's still there because I've seen it um, about a year ago. Um, but back then, most of the uh, bars and go-go bars, they were operated by Thais. The investment were from Thai people and they were done on the cheap. I mean, not being derogatory to Thais, but they were done very, very cheaply. So cheap, in fact, that some of the smaller bars you'd walk in and there'd be, um, you know, the lights that go around Christmas trees, they'd be strung around the bar and it was just done very, very cheaply. Whereas opposed to now, you have people like, um, or you know, companies like, Hooters who have moved into Thailand in a big way, you know, they're in Bangkok, they're in Pattaya, they're in Phuket. You've always kind of had the Hard Rock Cafe. First one, I think, was in Siam Square. But it's just more corporate now. There's a lot more money getting ploughed into the town. If you walk down Walking Street now, some of the um, clubs like the Aeroplane Bar or Aeroplane Club, whatever it's called, and some of the, the, the bigger ones that are actually on Walking Street themselves... Um, you know, the girls are present, presented very, very nicely in these uniforms like airline stewardesses or uh, something similar. And they're, they're real good. You go inside, I think there's one called the chrome bar or the steel bar. You go in there and it's all, you know, steel and it's the girls are all dressed nice and everything. But they've spent absolutely millions on the on the bars. And has it improved them? Not for me. Um, 
for me, I'll tell you what it reminded me of. I mean, I it reminded me of a strip. They're, they're, they're like strip clubs in America now. And yes, I have been to America several times. And yes, I did visit strip clubs while I was in America to see what they were all about, because we don't generally have them in the UK. Um, not like the American ones. So <clears throat> I, I don't particularly, for me, it's not because I'm getting older now. I just don't think you get the same kind of um, treatment like you did back then. I mean, I remember walking into bars, many, many bars. I didn't even have to ask for a drink. Uh, they knew what I drank. I'd walk in and sit down and the guy would be pouring a drink before I even asked him. That was quite nice. Um, you can't expect them to remember everybody now because there's thousands and thousands more visitors. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more money being spent on the bars. They're, they're real high tech. There's a lot of foreign investment and I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. Um, but that's just a, a, a personal opinion. Um, other changes I've noticed when I first got down there, there wasn't too many live bands. I'm not really a live band kind of person. I don't mind them if they're, I don't like these bands that, um, there's a name for them. They, they kind of, um, they're not the real band, but they, oh, somebody will write in and tell me now, what, what is it they're called? They're, they're tribute bands. That's what they're called, tribute bands. So you'll have a band called the Queen Tribute Band and a Freddie Mercury lookalike and all this sort of thing. And some of the Thai bands, they can play pretty good Western music. But <laughs> the problem in Thailand, it's not about uh, quality, it's about quantity. And what I mean by that is they, Soy 8, great example. Now, when I stayed in Soy 8 uh, years ago, there were no bands. And I'll give you a quick um, story. So there's a hotel in Soy 8. Just as you come in from the beach road, you walk up probably about 100 yards, 100 meters. On the left, there's a hotel called the Eastern Inn. It's got a little um, family mart or something on the corner. Now, I stayed in that hotel. I was the first guest in the room that I was in. It was a brand new hotel. Very, very nice, clean, reasonably priced, and it was peaceful. So you come out the front door of the Eastern Inn. You had all the bars in Soy 8, all the action, but when you'd had enough, if you wanted to stay in Soy 8, then back to the East in the Inn, as soon as you closed your door, it was very, very quiet. So the thing is with these bands, especially in Soy 8, they actually compete with each other to be the loudest. So some of them are quite good. They could do some quite good cover numbers, but they're just so damn loud, you know. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of staying in the East in the Inn again. I actually stayed in there about a year ago and it was it was hell. I mean, I just couldn't sleep until the bands had finished and they went on till about two o'clock in the morning. So that's another big change. Lots and lots of bands. And as I say, the thing with the Thai bands, they just compete with each other to be the loudest. Um, so that that's that's a, another major change. But I do believe they've been around for quite a few years. Um, right. So another thing I've noticed about um, Patia is the age group of people and where they come from. So when I first got down to Patia in 1995, I did actually live in Patia for a couple of years as well. Most of the visitors who were utilizing the entertainment in um, Patia, they were expats that were based in Bangkok and they'd come down to um, Patia at the weekends or on holidays for, you know, just to mess about, get drunk, what have you. Um, otherwise, the people who were actually flying into Patia from abroad, they tended to be kind of middle-aged, 35, 40 upwards. Uh, they were the people who could afford to come over. But now what I've noticed lately in Patia, there's a lot, a lot of young guys. And I mean, real young, I'm talking sort of 20 plus groups of them. That's something you never seen before. There's a lot of people from India, I suppose. Um, you know, it's one of those countries that's coming up. They're getting wealthy. They've got a lot of disposable income. And you see a lot of Indian guys and women, actually. But you see a lot of Indians now in, um, in Patia. When I first got there, the only Indians you'd see in Patia are the tailors that are based along the beach road. And that's not meant to be derogatory. It's just a fact there were Indian tailors there. Um, but there's a lot of Indians there. Obviously, there's a lot of Chinese tour groups go to Patia. Not so many now because of the coronavirus, but I'm sure they'll be back in the future. So that's another major change. Just the age group of some of the guys and uh, some of the countries that people come from. The other thing is I watched a... Um, We've got a documentary that's shown in the UK at the moment. It's called Busted in Bangkok. And it's, um, it, it, I'm just trying to think of the right words. It's kind of like one of these shows about Ibiza, you know. It, it, it's just, it's, it, it's basically focused on Walking Street and the tourist police and they follow people around. And um, on that particular show, they said there was something like uh, 10 to, I can't remember if it was 10 or 40, 10,000 or 40,000 people who, 
um, go through Walker Street every 24 hour period. And again, that's just something, it's like Disneyland down there now. I mean, when I first got there, you'd be lucky to see a few hundred people in Walking Street. And it was a kind of seedy street. You know, you went there with friends. It was kind of a little bit ducking and diving. You kept your head down, even if you weren't up to anything. But now, you know, I've, I've been down there and seen many, many groups of Chinese with somebody in the front holding a flag. So all the others behind them could uh, follow them and it, and they just do a, a walk through walking street uh, uh, that's not meant to be a pun but you know you get this all the time and it's it really reminds me of Disneyland it's not a um, it isn't I've got to be really careful how I try and say it because of YouTube but it's not what I think you can read between the lines it's not what it was originally meant to be if that makes sense I think I better move on I'm getting myself in trouble here um, okay so what else has changed just have a little thing the attitude of the girls. So when you went into these bars in the early 90s, um, the, the whole attitude, I think I've mentioned this in another video, but the whole attitude was different. You know, they treated you like a customer. And when I say they treated you like a customer, they were happy to see you. You got the service you paid for. They said please and thank you. They wired you when you come in the bar. It seems now they just treat you like a commodity. You know, you're a walking ATM machine, a buffalo on uh, a human buffalo, and and they just see you as a um, a means to an end, um, a way to extract cash out of you. You're just there. Uh, I mean, it's always been like that. That's that's why them bars existed from the early days. But it was done in a a much more subtle way back then. Now you almost feel like they they kind of detest you, and uh, I, I just think it's changed for the worst. Um, I think really, what else? There isn't a lot more I can tell you. Just a just a saturation of venues. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a a, a scenario uh, in the '90s. So you know when you you're coming along the beach road, it's one way traffic, so you can only go one way. It heads towards Walking Street. You get to Walking Street, you turn left, and then you've got the road that runs parallel to the beach road that goes all the way down to the Dolphin Roundabout. Well, on the other side of the road from say the beach side, they were all quiet streets. There was nothing down there. And they're just all packed with snooker halls, restaurants, beer bars. So they saturated it down there. And um, Soy 6 is another good example. I can remember walking down Soy 6 and I think it was 97, 98. I hadn't been down there before. It was the first time. And all that was down there was two massage shops. They weren't in your face. There were two or three girls um, dressed fairly decently outside with a sign saying traditional Thai massage and that's all there was there wasn't a single bar in soy six and now it's just it's like soy soy eight you know it's just absolutely saturated um, so that's it really that's the big changes I've seen in Patia it's more it's not a kind of hidden gem anymore if you know what I mean it was a kind of um, it was it was kind of an, a, a discreet place back then it's all over the internet it's all over the TV it's a worldwide phenomenon that everybody knows about it and that will lead me quite nicely into why I choose Hua Hin as opposed to Patty these days. Um, Hua Hin is like Patty used to be 30 years ago I guess it's very much laid back it's very clean they have a palace there so the police don't let any uh, nasty people there you don't get any Russian mafia you don't get any German gangsters there's no uh, abundance of con men living there boiler room scammers all that sort of thing um they once they the police in Hua Hin find out that these people are moving into town they don't last very long they're you know they go around and give them a little visit have a, uh, a quiet word in their ear and they're they're gone now just because it's a royal city and they're quite strict with who comes in in that way it's not a police state by any means i mean there's plenty of action down there there's two or three good good soys they don't have any go-go bars in Hua Hin but what they do have is they have a lot of um, beer bars and they're good beer bars and they have a lot of girls working in these bars. You've got Soy 80, you've got Soy 81, you've got Binta Bar, which is next to the Hilton. There's a lot of choice. You won't get bored. And the thing about Hua Hin, it's got everything that you would want. I, I've actually been to a lot of um, beach towns around Thailand and they're all very beautiful, um, but they just become boring for me. And uh, they look like, do you remember in the 70s, you'd get a poster in the West where you, I don't know where you come from, in the UK, it was quite popular. We'd have a, a poster of a palm tree stretched out across a crystal sea. And 
you can find many places in Thailand like that poster. But the problem for me is I've visited them and there's, there's a lot of them, they're beautiful, they're nice to visit, but I get bored very, very quickly and they don't have anything to offer me. A day on the beach, you know, a few drinks in a beach bar and I'm, I'm getting restless, I wanna get out of there. The thing with um, Hua Hin, they've got a couple of good shopping malls, not that I'm into shopping, but they have got, um, you know, shopping malls with food courts, big brands, local brands. Um, you can rent a motorbike and it's fairly safe, it's a slower pace. The um, streets are quite safe. As long as you don't go mad, your chances of having a motorcycle accident are very, very low. Um, you just try and keep away from the highway. There's no reason to go on the highway. Um, it's quite close to a, a city called Cha'am, which is a beach town. That's very, very nice. And that's uh, typically one of those kind of beach towns I was just explaining to you. It's golden sands, palm trees, absolutely beautiful, nice place to visit. But it's not somewhere you'd want to spend a week or two weeks. Well, I wouldn't anyway, but in a taxi, it's a 500 baht each way, a thousand baht. So you can spend the day there. The thing about Hua Hin, you've got a lot of entertainment. You've got shopping malls. You've got some great restaurants. You've got the night market, which is a, a huge outdoor food court with a, a live band. And you can, the live band's actually uh, not deafening. You can sit and talk and the music's in the background, which I like. And it's just a great town. So I wouldn't, I'm not trying to put anybody off Pat here. Obviously, my age is a big uh, influence on what I decide to do now. The other thing, guys, what you've got to remember is I've been to Pat here several hundred times. Now, when I first got down there, when I was, I think I was just over 30, it was great. I thought I was, I thought I'd landed in a, I thought I was a kid in a candy shop. It was just, I thought it was brilliant. But when you've been partying in Pat here for years and years and years, and you've done the same thing, it does wear a bit thin. And without wanting to sound like an old fuddy-duddy, which I'm not, by the way, um, it can get kind of boring, the same lines, the same sort of stuff. And the thing, the other thing is, I, I tend to feel a little bit out of place now because as I mentioned earlier, all these younger guys who go to Patrick, if you go into a go-go bar and 90% of the guys in there are 22, 23, 25, and you're nearly 60, then you feel a little bit uncomfortable, you know. I do anyway, out of place. And the other thing is you, you see a lot of fights in Walker Street now. People get absolutely hammered. Nothing wrong with that, getting drunk. Uh, we all do it uh, more often than not for me, unfortunately. Um, but they just, they just turn violent. You know, they start fighting with each other. And I'm really not into that at all. I'm a guy, when I've had a drink, I want a kebab and I want to go to bed. Nothing more than that. And you just don't see any trouble in Hua Hin. It's quiet. It's peaceful. It's not racy like in Patia. So as I say, if you're if you're if you haven't been to Patia and you're kind of middle aged, then you know you might find Hua Hin a little bit boring. But for me personally, the question was directed at me: Why do I prefer to go to Hua Hin rather than Patia? So one, it's my age. Two, I've visited there hundreds and hundreds of times. And three, I just like Hua Hin. It's more laid back and it's it's more me. So the only other thing I, I can tell you really that's a little bit interesting. If you are in Patia, or you're planning to take a vacation in Patia for several weeks, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there is a ferry service that you can catch from Patia to go to Hua Hin. It's on the other side of the Gulf, and I believe the price is something like 1,200 to 1,400 baht, depending on what level of luxury you choose. I think it's standard class and luxury class is just two and 1,200 and 1,400. Um, I have, I've not done it myself, but I've spoken to somebody who's done it, um, it takes several hours. What happens is you go down to the ferry port, you take this ferry, it drops you out in Hua Hin. You can get a motorbike taxi or a regular taxi at the port in Hua Hin, go into the city, spend the day, have a look around, decide if it's for you or not. You might find it boring, you might fall in love with it like I did. Um, but the good thing about it is you can jump back on the ferry and head over to back over to Patia maybe the following day, have one night in Hua Hin just for exploring. A lot of people don't realise there is a ferry service that goes between the two. So that's uh, quite good knowledge, something to know. So I hope that's actually answered the guys who have written to me and asked me the, them two questions. And there is quite a lot of them. I hope that's kind of explained um, why I don't opt for Patia now and I opt for Hua Hin instead and the changes in Patty. I hope you found them interesting. And the next video I'm gonna do is actually gonna be a subscribers, contributors um, video. I've got, I'm a bit of a dinosaur. I notice some, I notice a lot of other YouTubers when they make notes, they do it on their phone though. They've got a, a notes program on their phone, an app, and they make the notes on the phone. And then as they're talking to the camera, they're looking at the phone. I'm a dinosaur, guys. Believe it or not, I still use a clipboard and I print stuff out like this. So 
the next video, as I say, it's going to be, um, I, I get guys write to me and they tell me stories, what happened to them with Thai girls. Um, the, the, I've got a couple of pages from a guy who's, uh, he's been scammed quite a few times. So I'll be adding that in. Um, there's relationship, um, uh, things about relationships here, things, uh, I'm just trying to find the right words. Um, there's another guy he went into, was it Spanky's in Nana? And he's got a story to tell. And yeah, so I've got, I've got various bits. So I'm going to make this uh, video. It's going to be based on what subscribers have sent to me. Now, if you'd like to be included in that video, tell me a story. Um, you know, I'd love to hear from you. You know how to contact me now. I've, I've mentioned it lots of times. Just drop a, your email address in the comments. Nobody else will see it because all my comments are approved. Um, I'll grab your email address. I'll write to you. You'll know it's me. And then you can just reply to that email and uh, send me what you want to send. But any kind of story, you know, I mean, if you were the Thai girl and you thought it was a serious relationship and she ran off with somebody else or she robbed you and or got you beat up by a Thai husband, I don't know. Um, send it to me and if it's interesting i think people will be interested i'll include that in this next video so unless something else comes along like the coronavirus um we should be on schedule to do that next week okay guys so that's it for this one thanks very much for watching sorry if it was a little bit boring um compared to some of the others but um, hopefully the guys who asked me the questions found it quite interesting so until next week or uh, i'll try and get one in before next week um i'll catch you on the next video <laughs>